I just saw the government system wasn't really working. It wasn't changing lives. And we were told we couldn't share Christ. And apart from him, there's no such thing as a changed life. Nancy Alcorn was working at a prison for young women, and she was frustrated. She watched as many of the girls got out of prison only to go right back to the same situations that landed them there in the first place. So after eight years of working for the government, Nancy quit and started a ministry for young women struggling with life-controlling issues. We are seeing God transform the, the most hopeless situations, the darkest of the dark, because we have the freedom to share Christ, and it's just a very powerful thing. There's nothing stronger, nothing higher, there's nothing greater than the name of Jesus, all the honor, all the power, all the glory to the name of Jesus. Nancy's ministry has now been going strong for 36 years, and she gives all the credit to one factor, Jesus Christ. Nancy is our guest on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. A little later in her story, you're going to hear Nancy say, there's no such thing as a life that God can't transform. You're also going to hear Billy Graham talk about that. Man needs some kind of transformation because he is basically unhappy. Life is filled with every manner of dissatisfaction and misery. But a life that's been transformed by Jesus Christ is one that's filled with peace and joy. We can tell you more at this website, findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. And we also want to remind you that we love getting email from you. You can drop us a line at this address, gps at billygram.org. Again, that's gps at billygram.org. GPS. God. People. Stories. I grew up on a black Angus cattle farm, and I was the middle kid of seven kids. That cattle farm was in Manchester, Tennessee, about an hour southeast of Nashville. Nancy Alcorn's parents had a rocky marriage. Life was pretty chaotic. Family did go to church together, but it didn't have much of an impact on Nancy. Even though I was made to go to church every Sunday, I did not enjoy it. I didn't like it. I, it was kind of a dead church, and I, could, I never had a relationship with God at all. By the time Nancy was 17, she had experimented with drinking and was actively planning to try out drugs once she got to college. She had even made contact with a drug dealer. My whole senior year of high school, I've just been feeling this empty feeling inside, like if this is all there is to life, I don't know if I want to keep living. It's just like, I just felt just so mundane and empty. And so I thought, well, maybe when I go off to college, I'll graduate to drugs because the drinking just was not getting it for me, that empty feeling. So maybe I'll fill it with drugs. Then, three weeks before Nancy left for college, a friend invited her to a Christian youth rally. That was in August of 1972. There were kids standing up, telling their testimonies, talking about getting set free from stuff. It was just like, wow. So it was a variety of people, real real people telling real stories of how they met Christ and, and how, what he meant in their life and, and talking about a personal relationship. And I never heard that before. One woman in particular talked about how empty she felt before she knew Jesus and how she had tried to fill that emptiness with all the wrong things when she went to college. It was as if God had crafted the message just for Nancy. And I was so impacted by her story that, and when she talked about her emptiness, it was like the conviction of the Holy Spirit came. And I responded that week and gave my life to Christ. And it was the Once I commit to something, I am a very committed, loyal person. So I was all in from day one. When Nancy headed to Middle Tennessee State University, she immediately tracked down other Christians on campus. She spent her time building her faith and sharing it with others. In fact, she helped take her campus ministry group from 50 students in her freshman year to over 500 by the time she graduated. And Nancy was also busy studying criminal justice and social work. She knew she wanted to help people. So when she was offered a position at a girl's prison about an hour from campus, she jumped at the opportunity. 
I immediately said yes. I think I got paid like $300 a month. It was not certainly not for the money, but I was so excited about the opportunity because I thought, you know, I can go in there and share Christ with these girls. And I quickly found out that they were, that, that was the big no, no, you know, cause the warden talked to me and she goes, you know, people are telling me that you're talking to these girls about Jesus Christ and you're not supposed to be doing that. So I, I shared my testimony with her and I remember her saying to me, well, I understand what you're trying to do because I'm a backslidden Baptist myself, so I get it. But she said, if 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 anybody complains, then I'm going to be calling you in. So I said, okay, fair enough. So I was supposed to work 40 hours a week that summer, and I ended up putting in 80 hours a week because I loved it so much. Also that summer, Nancy made quite a discovery. The athletic director that I was working under was kind of, I, I mean, I'm just going to say it. She was kind of lazy. And, and so she would sit in her office in the gym and read fashion magazines. And I'm so I started digging around and found out that we had all this money that had been budgeted for athletics and it was just sitting there. So I talked to her and said, hey, do you care if I do something with this? And she goes, I don't care. So, I mean, it was like tens of thousands of dollars. So what? we built a softball field in the back part of the, you know, it was set up just like a women's prison, but it was a lot of property around it. So we built a softball field. I organized intramural sports. We we ordered athletic equipment, softball, basketball. The warden was so impressed with Nancy's work ethic, she offered her the position of assistant athletic director. And Nancy was only 19 years old at the time. She hadn't graduated from college yet, and the position required a college degree. So the warden worked out a plan. Nancy would go to class in the morning and work at the prison from 1 to 9 p.m., And the state would pay 100 percent of her college tuition for her degree in criminal justice. So I'm just sitting here going, my gosh, that was amazing. It was an amazing opportunity. Nancy spent the next five years working with young women at the prison. But as she saw what happened to many of the girls once they left, Nancy grew more and more frustrated with the system. This is what I saw. Um, I saw young women go back to the same neighborhoods that they came from. The gang members were waiting on them. The pimps and the drug dealers, all of those people were waiting to pull them right back into the same stuff they came from. And we begin to hear of young women before they ever reach the age of 18, dying from drug overdoses, getting killed in street gang fights. Some of them committed suicide because they felt like they had no hope for their future. And... That just broke my heart because I knew that the same Jesus that changed my life could change their life. But but I was working in a system that wouldn't allow us to truly disciple and share. I mean, it's one thing to to ask Jesus into your heart and get born again, but it's something else altogether different to be discipled in the faith. And, And so that was what was missing, even though I led many girls to Christ in the gym, uh, in my office, in the back corner of the gym. But once they returned home, they weren't really being discipled. It was at this point that Nancy got a disturbing look at what life had been like for many of the girls she met at the prison. Around age 24, she was recruited by Emergency Child Protective Services in Nashville. She spent the next three years in the inner city accompanying police officers on emergency calls in the middle of the night. What she saw was absolutely horrifying. I remember seeing little boys and little girls being sodomized, raped, used, abused, physical, physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, neglect. I mean, just really some crazy, crazy stuff that I used to hear about on the news or read about in the paper. But man, when I saw it with my own eyes, it would just broke my heart. And I I would have nightmares about the stuff. And I'm like, God, what are you doing? I actually found myself getting mad at God. Like, why do you have me here? What, why do I have to look at this stuff? Why do I have to have these see this? Why do I have to? I'm having these nightmares. It's awful. And finally, uh, through prayer one day, I just got quiet and listened. And I heard God say, you just spent five years dealing with angry teenage girls at the juvenile delinquent facility. And now I'm taking you back in time and showing you the things that happened to them when they were little kids so that you understand that there's always a why behind the why that these kids didn't just decide one day to be bad, that these are the things that happened to them, and this is why they were so angry. Just like at the prison, Nancy was not supposed to share her faith. While the problem seemed obvious, sin, 
She could not present the solution to the problem, which was Jesus Christ. And Nancy was frustrated. I just saw the government system wasn't really working. It wasn't changing lives. And we were told we couldn't share Christ. And apart from him, there's no such thing as a changed life. As Nancy was struggling with her job in Nashville, she was also volunteering with Teen Challenge. You might be familiar with that ministry. It's a Christ-centered addiction recovery ministry that was seeing amazing success rates. Teen Challenge works just primarily with drug addicts, but I had a heart for not just drug addicts, but like girls that are facing unplanned pregnancies, girls that are, have been sexually abused. Like because of what I'd seen, the, you know, not just addicts, but girls with eating disorders. I'd had an eating disorder myself. Girls that uh, were, were uh, you know, self-harm, cutting themselves because of their emotional pain, like uh, girls who were suicidal, uh, girls who, you know, just whatever their issue, whatever the problem is, I knew Jesus was the answer. And out of that experience, and I recognized that God has not anointed the government to heal broken hearts and set captives free, and that there had to be a way where there was freedom to share Christ. After eight years with the government, Nancy sensed God releasing her to start something new. And in 1983, a ministry was born. We started taking in young women ages 13 to 32, and God showed me three things. He said, I want you to take them in free of charge, and they have to want to come. They have to want help because you can't make someone change. Secondly, God showed me that we, as an organization, we needed to tithe 10% of what comes into other ministries helping hurting people and that our needs would be met because of our giving. And the third thing God showed me was not to take any government funding or any other money that would take away our freedom to share Christ. The name of Nancy's ministry is Mercy Multiplied, and it's now in its 36th year. Nancy has seen God transform thousands of women's lives through four residential counseling programs in Tennessee, Louisiana, Missouri, and California. The programs are all offered free of charge to the women who decide to come. For the last 15 years, Nancy has hired an independent non-Christian firm to measure the results of her ministry. It reports that 80% of the women who went through the program went from describing themselves as either poorly or not at all adjusted to life to being well-adjusted to life when they leave. One of those women is named Tanya. Tanya was one of the most severely depressed people I've ever seen. She was horribly suicidal. She actually tried to slit her own throat. Noticeable scarring, but today it's faded to the point that you hardly even notice it. She had multiple suicide attempts. So many was in and out of psychiatric hospitals, treatment programs, and, and basically her Um, her family was told that their answer was uh, permanent and long-term psychiatric care. So basically she was getting ready and she was only in her teen years, like 19, I think she was getting ready to be admitted to a long-term psychiatric facility for the rest of her life. I mean, she went through shock treatment. They had to strap her down to keep her from hurting herself, put her in padded, Uh, walls. I mean, it was just bad. Someone told Tanya's brother about Nancy's ministry. He told his parents, and they decided to take Tanya to the Mercy Multiplied Treatment Home in Nashville. She was so drugged that she didn't even hardly know where she was. And But God just put it in my heart, don't give up on this girl because I'm going to do a miracle. Most of the women spend six to eight months in residential counseling at Mercy Multiplied. Tanya was there for a year, working with the Christian psychiatrists and counselors. As the months went by, Nancy began to see changes, and then a total transformation. The light began to go in through the Word of God, and the darkness was being pushed out. She began to understand the need to forgive people. We were able to get her backed off of the psychiatric drugs enough that she began to be able to comprehend the Word of God. She began to be able to renew her mind. She began to understand that it wasn't God's will for her to take her own life because he had a life that he wanted her to live, and he had things he wanted her to accomplish. In a year's time, she would, by the time she graduated, she was not on any medication whatsoever. She was full of light and full of joy. Tanya was a new creation. 
and she never looked back. In fact, Nancy saw Tanya earlier this year, and she is still full of joy in living for Christ more than 20 years after God saved her life. She is definitely one of the greatest miracles I've ever seen. Tanya is one of thousands of stories God has written through Nancy's ministry from 1983 to today. Many of those stories can be found on mercymultiplied.com. They're written by the women who have discovered hope and life in Jesus Christ. The highest level of faith that I have is for God to change, transform lives. Because to me, there's no such thing as a life that God can't transform. In that home, we knew we were safe to be young enough to dream, find the faith to believe. And in that home, love it had no end. It's where we learn to forgive. In that home. If you've been wondering if you can have a transformed life too, like the women who have gone through Mercy Multiplied, we have good news. Yes, you can. And it all starts with an encounter with Jesus Christ. To learn more about who he is and to invite him into your life, visit this website, findpeacewithgod.net right now. You can have real hope for your future. Again, that web address is findpeacewithgod.net. Here in just a minute, Nancy is going to explain why a popular and in many ways disturbing Netflix series had a major impact on her and how it led her to write a book for people who are struggling with depression and suicidal thoughts. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Man needs some kind of transformation because he is basically unhappy. Life is filled with every manner of dissatisfaction and misery. Billy Graham. Man knows, whether by instinct or perhaps by reason, that a transformation of his personal character is the most needed thing of all in the world in which we live. Man's constant moral failure has caused him to lose confidence in himself as he is, and that if he is helped, God will have to do the helping. Your life can be changed and transformed by the Lord Jesus Christ. I beg of you, don't be deceived to think that you can find your hope or joy in any other, for it is in Christ alone that salvation is found. In that moment that you commit your life to Him, God performs a supernatural act called the new birth. There is an infusion of divine life. You become a partaker of God's very nature. In other words, eternal life in the form of the Spirit of God dwells in your life. You become a totally new person. Will you accept Him now? We can tell you more about accepting Jesus Christ at our website, findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. Our guest on this episode of GPS has been Nancy Alcorn. She's the founder of Mercy Multiplied, a nonprofit ministry that has helped thousands of women find freedom in Christ after struggling with issues, issues like sexual abuse, addiction, eating disorders, and suicide attempts. There's a Netflix series called 13 Reasons Why, and it was in the news a lot because of how it portrays teen suicide. Nancy watched the series, and she ended up writing a book called Treatment or Transformation, 13 Real Stories Why You Can't Argue with a Changed Life. In the Netflix series, a teenager decides to take her own life, and she leaves behind 13 reasons why she did what she did. Nancy wanted to present an alternative choice. I was so sad that this girl took her life, and I was so sad at the way they left it. It was like a just a, a very broken, sad series, and all these people were watching it. And I just decided, you know, I, I'm going to let this inspire me to write a book where I share 13 real stories of young women who experienced a very different outcome than the girl featured in the 13 Reasons Why series, simply because they chose to reach out for help. So if you're out there and you're listening and you're suicidal, don't do it because God wants to free you from that pain. He wants to heal you and he wants you to, have, to live an amazing life filled with joy that is totally fulfilled in him. And just a reminder that if you are seeking peace and hope, it is just a click and just a prayer away. 
If you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, go to findpeacewithgod.net. That might kind of feel impersonal to direct somebody to a website, but we want to get materials in your hands as quickly as possible wherever you are. Again, findpeacewithgod.net. We want to thank Nancy Alcorn for sharing her story with us on this episode of GPS. We pray it was a blessing to you. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. Good news.